In these days, the Human Rights Council in Geneva meets for its 12th session. For the first time, the United States take part as a council member. The experiences Germany has made during the past months with the Human Rights Council show very clearly that we need a more effective instrument in the field of international human rights protection. Will the membership of the United States make the Human Rights Council more efficient? Are we about to enter a new period of international human rights protection or only a new era of confrontation? Of course, the US alone cannot change the rules of procedure within the UN system, but they can make a difference. From my point of view, the key word of this change is credibility. Protecting human rights in first place means to implement the rule of law and human rights at home. Without a stable home base, you simply cannot criticize the situation in other countries. That applies for every country and it goes without saying that it also applies for Germany and the US. Today, with the US taking up work as a member of the Human Rights Council, we need them more than ever as a stable and credible partner. Therefore, it is essential to build up a new human rights policy on solid grounds. One main pillar must be torture cannot be justified and accepted in any form. Those who put others to the torture, those who give instruction to do so, must be faced with a charge. In the same line, the US and the European Union are partners. And I think one of the benchmarks is how we deal with the problem of closing down Guantanamo. If we want to see Guantanamo closed, we have to support the United States and the means we have to be ready to take an appropriate number of detainees. Cooperation is not a goal in itself. To protect human rights is also necessary to have certain limits of cooperation. Beyond, them, <coughs> beyond some red lines, we must not go. In the field of the EU, or in this field, the EU can learn a lot from the United States. And I personally hope that this attitude will influence the United States membership in the Human Rights Council. In it, it is 20 years ago now that we as civil rights activists in the GDR fought for freedom. Looking back, on more than three years of working in international human rights protection, one of the central conclusions I draw is that we have to defend freedom again, with open minds and open words, even if this means confrontation.